Hey planner friends, welcome back to my channel and the last day of Plansmas. Today I'm going to be setting up for the month of January in my small passion journal. Let's get started. So here we are back in my small passion journal. This is the same journal that I was using in 2021 because I've still got half of it left so I'm going to continue using it into 2022. For this setup I'm actually not using any stickers because I really struggled to think of a theme for this month. So I've taken some inspiration from Plant Based Brides 2022 setup and I'm using some square shapes and straight lines to decorate all of my pages. My theme colour for January is light blue as you will have seen already in my passion planner. So for this setup I'm using two passion markers, the light blue and dark blue one, and then also the Sharpie S note which is kind of giving me a blue that's in between these two. Other pens that I'm using in this setup are my Stabilo fine liner and also my Uniball fine liner. As you can see on screen I've also got a silver gel pen but I'm not actually going to use that very much in this setup. Although I've got no stickers I do have some things that I will be sticking in around decorate so I've got some craft paper all in little squares and also I've got two types of washi tape that you can see in the top left hand corner. One of these is an old one from Paper Chase and the other one is the Winter Doodle washi from Planner Face. <laughs> As you can see while I've been chatting away about pens I have started my cover page so I just left it in January and then added in my skeleton monthly calendar because I don't really use a monthly calendar in this journal. I've used my different shades of blue to create overlapping rectangles and then I'm adding some dark grey lines across the top of those in a sort of abstract way. Again this is the section that's taken from Plant Based Brides 2022 setup. I then decided to add in some craft paper but have my line continue over that. I've also got some little swatches of my theme colours for the month in the bottom left hand corner of this title page and I'm just adding in a little bit more craft paper to fill in some space at the bottom. Because I haven't moved into a new journal for 2022, my quote page for January is kind of a 2022 cover page. So I've pasted in some squares of my craft paper and I'm writing 2022 in my silver gel pen across these four squares. This silver gel pen is just a cheap one that I picked up from Sainsbury's so to really get the ink to flow it takes a while and I had to really make these lines quite thick so that they would show up. I feel like they show up on camera better than they do in real life because they've obviously got my lights bouncing off them at this point and in real life they look a little bit more dull but I'll get over it. My quote for the beginning of this year is I don't know about you but I'm feeling 2022 mostly because I can't get that song out of my head now because it's all over TikTok and Reels. I've tried to use this sort of bouncy lettering that I used for my quote in the beginning of my passion planner setup because I just wanted them to kind of match a little bit. I'm then around the edge going to draw in some more of these boxes and lines that I'm decorating all of my pages with. On my cover page for these lines I used my Grace to Below fine liner but I swapped to using my other fine liner for this so that these lines stood out more because I felt like I went over them a couple times to make them really stand out on my cover page. Also as we get further through the setup you see less and less of the ruler because I just started drawing them freehand instead. To finish off my quote page I'm just adding in some washi to the bottom right hand corner and then we can move on to my trackers page. On the left hand page I'm creating my sleep and energy tracker so this is to record how many hours of sleep I get a night and then also what my energy levels are like during the day. This format has been really working for me for the past six or seven months so I'm keeping it exactly the same as I have before my last few setups. I basically have the hours of the night along the top and then the days of third month down the side and I draw in a little box for how long I was asleep that night and then colour it in with a colour according to my key of how good my energy levels were that day. I'm not super keen on how I did the title for this page but I couldn't work out how to make it better so I just left it like that and I think once it's all filled in it will kind of blend in a bit better. Again I'm just adding some more of those squares around the side and then also some washi tape and finally we can just add in my key in the top right hand corner and then we can move on to my headache tracker for the month.
My headache tracker for this month is all of those squares that you can see on the right hand page drawn in in pencil at the moment. I'm going to zoom in adding those all in in fine liner because it did take me a decent amount of time, but for this I'm using my Grace to Below fine liner. This spread works exactly the way as a normal mood tracker except it's just for my headaches because I get chronic migraines and it's good to be able to relate my energy levels and sleep for that day to whether I had a headache that day as well. This is also kind of the reason why a normal mood tracker wouldn't work for me because when I have a really bad migraine that's my mood for the entire day. <laughs> Also when I was sketching these out I thought 5x5 squares would probably be a decent size for these but since I've already coloured two of them in as it's the 3rd of January when I'm recording this, um, that's a lot of space to have to fill in or colour in every day so I think if I was going to do this again I would make the squares a bit smaller. I've just numbered all of these squares so that I've got one per day and then I'm adding in a header in the same style as the left hand side header. I didn't want to decorate this page too much and also I didn't really have space to because it's going to be very colourful when it's all filled out. So I'm just adding my key to the bottom from no headache to severe headache and then we can move on to my weekly pages. Because I'm not using any stickers this month I've decided that all of my weeklies are going to be on the same Dutch door format so I'm cutting six squares off of each page and then you should be able to see the decoration down the left and right hand side of the back pages of this Dutch door setup so I don't have to decorate every single page loads. Setting up my weekly like this actually saved me loads of time aside from sketching everything in this whole setup only took me an hour. For reference my previous bullet journal setups have been like two hours worth of footage and also all of the time sketching in beforehand as well. So as you can see I'm just adding in some more of these geometric shapes and lines on the left hand side of the page. This section will be visible from all of the pages of my weekly spreads. I'm still going to be decorating the like internal part of each weekly spread as well but not as much as I would if I was doing each page separately. The other change that I've made for my weekly spreads this month is that I'm combining the weekends so I don't have a journaling section for each day of the weekend, just the weekend as a whole. I'm not sure whether I'm going to like this or not but I'm going to give it a try and I've set up my entire month now so if I hate it I'll just have to get over it. For this first setup I'm using craft paper to create all of my headers for my days of the week. Although pretty much all of my setups will have the same layout for this month, I've tried to keep them a little bit different just so that I don't get bored. Moving on to the second weekly spread and I'm going to start by adding in some more of those geometric shapes and lines but this time at the bottom of the page. As you may notice I've already started just doing these completely freehand and giving up on my ruler. For this second spread I didn't bother with any craft paper on this page but instead I've drawn little borders around the outside of each day of the week and then I'm going to add in some washi tape to add some more decoration onto this page. This horizontal layout gives me loads of room for journaling but also I can get kind of bored of it kind of quickly so like I said I'm going to keep trying to mix up all of the different spreads so that they're not exactly the same every single week. As this is the first time that I've had to write dates in quite a while, obviously I messed one of them up. I don't know why I put the 15th slash the 26th, but I've tried to cover up the best I can, but with these pens it just kind of, like you can really see what you've written underneath it, so you can definitely tell that I messed up the number. With my washi tape I decided to cut the thicker blue washi in half so they didn't take up quite so much space, and then I'm just layering over some of this gorgeous planner face doodle washi. For the third week I decided to create my geometric shapes in the middle of the page and then again use the craft paper headers to mark all of my days of the week. The craft paper that I'm using is from Tesco and I wrapped all of my Christmas presents in this craft paper so I just have like a drawer of offcuts from wrapping Christmas presents that I'm going to be using probably all year. Just to mix it up a bit with this one, as well as doing my craft paper headers, I also drew a little border along the top of each section for each day of the week. And that's pretty much it for the third week of January, and then we can just move over to the last week of January. Because the 31st of January is a Monday, that's going to be included in my February setup because I can't be bothered to do like one day on its own. For this final setup of the month I decided to have the geometric shapes in the bottom of the spread and then also I'm going to be doing that kind of sidebar type thing on the right hand side that will be visible along all of the days. I've tried to make it so that none of the geometric shape sections look the same at all across all of my spreads. So 
So on this section that's going to be visible across all of the weeks, I decided to letter in January as well as having these geometric shapes patterns along the side. This was a super simple setup, which is exactly what I needed after doing so much work on all of my Plansmas videos this week. So this has been a super busy week for me and I hope you've enjoyed all of my Plansmas videos. I've really loved making them and I'm really happy with how they've all turned out. Thank you so much if you've watched any of them and especially if you've watched all of them because it was so much work and hopefully next year if I decide to do this again, I'll decide a little bit earlier in the year and then actually be able to get all of it up before Christmas. To finish off this spread I just added a border around some of the days and then I'm adding some craft paper and an extra geometric line in the middle and you may notice that I completely forget to write in any days or dates in this spread but let's take a look at final flip through. So we have my January cover page and kind of my 2022 cover page and then my sleep, energy and headache trackers. and then a Dutch Door Weekly for the four weeks in January for all of my journaling. So that's it for my January journal setup. Now I just have to fill this with memories from the month. So that's everything for this video, friends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.